All right, we've been learning about body systems and we're gonna continue that. And this lesson is about body systems and their interactions. So I hope you're ready for another awesome science lesson. Let's get started. Okay, again, we're gonna use this pencil symbol to indicate when you should take notes. And today's topic is body systems, so don't forget to include that. So let's look at the image, okay? What body systems do you think are involved in skateboarding? So think, let's see, what kind of systems do we have? We have muscular, we have skeletal, we have respiratory, integumentary, digestive, circulatory, excretory, okay, immune. So think about it. What do you think are um, would be the systems that are involved in skateboarding? And then think about this. If one of these systems were to stop interacting with the other systems, would this activity still be possible? And write your explanation. And hopefully, by the end of the lesson, you'll have a better idea of whether or not your guesses, hopefully logical ones, were correct. So remember, structure determines what? Function. Structure determines function. So in the kidney, we have a lot of different types of cells, a lot of different types of tissue, and they each have specific structures because they perform specific functions. The nerve cells, the muscle cells, <clears throat> the um, blood cells, they all have specific structures to serve their specific functions. So it's vital to remember, structure determines function. All right, let's talk about movement. Okay, movement involves the muscular system, the skeletal system, the nervous system, muscles attached to bones, and muscles contract or pull bones and relax. Muscles never ever push, muscles only pull. So when I do this, this muscle pulls. And when I straighten my arm, this muscle pulls. There's no pushing ever. Muscles only contract to pull or relax. And that's it. And nerves control movement. They send signals and um, help coordinate Things like walking, running, riding a bike. So what body systems are involved in movement again? Think about it. Now let's talk about control. The nervous system is fast. The nervous system involves nerves and the nervous system involves electrical signals. So that's why it happens so fast. And because specialized cells the neurons or nerves, um, they don't need to communicate with any other system for it to get done, it's fast. The endocrine system is our slow system. Now that doesn't mean it takes years, okay, but it's slower than a nervous system response. It involves glands and the glands release chemical signals or hormones, but they are released into the bloodstream. So that's why it takes a little bit more time. They don't have specialized cells to transmit the message around the body. They have to rely on the bloodstream. So what systems are involved in control again? And this, this image that you're seeing is of the plantar reflex, which only works with newborns. You press on this part of their foot and they will curl around your finger. Now, transport. Most cells don't move, they can't move. Okay, your skin cell right here in your arm can't move next to your stomach to get some nutrients. So transport relies on the circulatory, the respiratory, and the excretory system. All three of those systems work together to bring nutrients, wastes, and gases where they need to go. Okay, so again, it's to solve the problem of cells not being able to move around and get what they need. So we're going to bring it to you since you can't move. So why do capillaries have to be so small? All right, in order to reach every cell in the body, they would need to be small. So why is that? Because 
diffusion happens out of the capillaries. Nutrients leave, wastes come in, oxygen and carbon dioxide moving back and forth. And if the capillaries were not so small, that diffusion would take too long and the cells just would not survive. So what are those systems involved in transport again? Think about it. See if you know. Now, stimulus and response. Okay, here's one that's probably pretty familiar for you. You hear a notification, you check your device. A stimulus involves the senses. So we see it, we hear it, we touch it, we taste it, we smell it. And so senses detect signal, signals or a stimulus. And then the response is an action. And the response can involve one system and it can involve many systems. Now, the stimulus can be something that is internal, but it could also be external. Okay. So here are some examples of stimulus and response. So you're walking past some very smelly garbage and you cover your nose. Another example, you accidentally reach down and touch the stove surface, which is hot, and you pull your hand away. You may yell, you may say, ow. So can you think of any other examples of a stimulus and a response? All right, what about hormones? Hormones are chemical signals and they come from glands. And hormones have to travel through the bloodstream and then they cause a response. So some example is adrenaline. Adrenaline is released, your pupils will dilate, your heart will race, your breathing rate will increase. Okay, it's responsible for that fight or flight response. There are changes that happen in puberty. There are hormones that are responsible for those changes. So here are some images. You might notice some differences uh, between pre-puberty and post-puberty, okay? So what are the systems that are involved in hormones? Remember, it's not just the endocrine system. What does it have to work with? It has to work with something else. All right, here's some examples of um, systems working together, okay? So there are, um, in order to break down food, we need circulatory and uh, digestive. The brain has to coordinate with the muscular and the skeletal system in order to make um, the right movements, okay? Excretory, circulatory, respiratory, integumentary, they all work with um, filtering blood and getting rid of waste. Okay. Again, muscular, skeletal, and nervous system are going to be responsible for the movements. Okay. The endocrine system is responsible for hormones, but remember, it doesn't work alone. So do you remember what its partner is? Psst, it's our circulatory. And then breathing um, and um, the oxygen levels in the blood, respiratory and circulatory systems. So we are uh, in class going to talk about some assignments and these are the upcoming assignments okay um if you are not watching this for my class then you do not have to worry about it these are not your assignments and you have learned a little bit more about how body systems interact remember odds are it's not one system acting alone it at least has another partner so thanks for watching